the first step to our engine swap was to find an engine that we could trust. We did find one and we did not get it from Hal, but he did took a good look at it and we appreciate that. This is by far the best tool that I used. It was so functional, so useful. I had a Harbor Freight winch on the top and uh, rollers on the bottom from Harbor Freight also. It's just, it was very cheap, very easy to make, very handy. It's just amazing the way it works. It just it serves me, it served me really, really well. These are some supports that I did to the muffler. Uh, this is the factory Kit Fox muffler and it's known for for cracks, so I prevent try to prevent that. This is the process of installing the engine in my rig, and this is how it looks. I'm installing an MGL for the engine monitor. It works pretty good. One of the things that I wanted to do is test the engine thoroughly before putting it in the in the airplane. I wanted to test it. I want to make sure it works well. I want to check the temperatures and everything I could check. I want to have the MGL on it and all the cables from the MGL, all the cam buses stuck together, everything working properly before I install the engine in the plane. So that way it would be much easier for me to, to know if everything was okay before I put it on the plane. One of the things that you have to do is cut these lugs from the starter motor and you, I can tell easily where to cut because of the firewall that I did and it was very easy to see. This is the throttle that I devised. It worked really, really well when I with the engine. It just served really well. After the engine was fully tested and all the cables were attached and everything looks good, no leaks of any kind, it's time to get the plane into the garage. This is the plane with the Rotax 582 removed. This is how it looks. This is what I need for the engine to come in, the new engine. This is the control panel. A lot of it is going to go. Most of the what's on the right is uh, 582 gauges. All of that is going to be swapped for the MGL. And this is the ADSB in and out. A lot of the cables are going to go and new cables are going to come in. As you can see, the jig has to be wide enough for the airplane nose to go into it and so it allows the engine to come in and out and down and up very, very easy. As I attach the engine to the frame, I notice that the 
cap of the oil pan is a little too high and it won't allow the cowl to go over it without hitting it and so I needed to do something about it because I didn't want to cut the oil filter length because to me that's factory that's part of the design of the Rotex and so what I decided to do was to embed the oil filter into the firewall and have it there it fits perfectly is right on I don't have to make any alterations to the design of the oil filter and it works really well to help with the temperature I decided to install this oil thermostat and it's doing a pretty good job the other add-on to the installation that I did is this thermostat for the cooling that works really well with the thermostat for the oil both together if you have low temperatures for winter they work together really well this is the process of how the panel changed and all the gauges that they were removed and fuses swap for circuit breakers new cabling and new routing and this is the end result one of the things that I really like is that red LED. It shows when the engine is charging or not. It's very, very handy. On the right, there's an iPad with four flight and it has all the ADSB in and out. And then the cell phone there is has all the information from eye level, the bump, which you can see on the top of the windshield, but it doesn't go there, of course. And it has an angle of attack, which I really like. Thinking five years ahead when I have to do the changes of the rubber in the motor mount, I decided to do this quick disconnect. It holds all the cables or most of the cables that plug the instrument panel to the engine. And by unplugging that, uh, you can remove the engine and it takes 45 minutes to remove the engine and it takes just a little over an hour to put the engine back together so i thought that was a good idea after all this was done something that took me by surprise is that the cowling was too short for the 912 and i had to make it bigger and these are the materials that i used to make it bigger i just went to lowe's and got some of this put some tape on it and then put fiberglass over it and this is how it looked and it worked really well I incremented the length by two inches and then I painted it all and then I presented it on the plane to see how it looks and it worked really well I was surprised the hardest part of doing all of this was sanding and making making it look like nothing had been done before so I was I was pleased with the process it, the two inches extra of fiberglass was very easy it just took a lot of sanding to to go over and over and have it neatly look something that for sure was not part of the plan was a landing gear and I found somebody selling this landing gear this landing gear is from uh, from Skystar the original landing gear that came with the kit fox 4 and so it's an older one you can't get them anymore but i really really like it I just i think it's great amazing piece of engineering for for the for the plane and to swap the those bungee cords so there are the bungee cords taken out and then removing the bungee cord landing gear that I used to have in the plane and uh, getting ready to install this other one as you can see this jig keeps, keeps working its miracles is doing really really well serves every purpose that I need it's just perfect for this all these projects With this new setup, I'm going to gain 3 inches in height and I'm going to gain 10 pounds in weight. And so here I'm checking the toe of the tires and putting the landing gear together. I'm checking the toe so it's good. And 
doing the, the brakes and making sure everything is okay. Now it's time to sync the carburetors. There's more than this to the syncing of the carburetors, but this is a little part that, that is fun to watch. Next thing is to check the weight and balance. And the weight and balance after it was done, it revealed that the center of gravity was at 10.2, which is the most forward center of gravity the Kid Fox can have. So I needed some weight in the back and I decided to put six pounds of weight at the tail. The way I did this is by inserting the lead into this tubing aluminum square tubing and put it in the back so you can see the screw back there that attaches to the tail on, on the bottom and here it has attached to the top securely there are two pieces to it one weighs four pounds and the other one weighs two so i can remove the two pounds easily if i needed to and there's a clearance to the rod so it'll never be a problem at the end the weight and balance went from 10.2 to 11.4 Okay, here we go. RPM pitch test. Uh, see the the um, the elevator is hit is trapped with the with the seat belt, so it's always up. Okay. See you in Mars. Thank you. I remember before the engine swap that I wanted to look at every picture I could find in the internet to see how people did their setup and what I could learn from it, what I could adapt or what I could change, things that I wanted, things that I didn't want it. 
And so I decided to make this video of the final setup where everything is, how everything goes, where everything is at, the way that th I did things. So you can take a look at it and decide the things that you like, the things that you want to make difference, the things that you would like to improve. So here's a look of the of the engine and how everything is done. There's a lot of uh, witness marks everywhere. Uh, it's just very convenient to have them. And that was a suggestion from my AMP that I took to heart. And so this is here for you to see. This is the setup from the bump, how it looks. Here I am taxiing the plane. I'm doing slow taxiing, fast taxiing, doing turns, doing stops, making sure the brakes are okay, making sure the RPM and the engine responds well, making sure the temperatures, the oil temperatures, the oil pressure, the coolant temperature, everything is okay. Nothing gets too cold, nothing gets too hot, um, and that everything works fine. The tow works great. and and getting used to the new pitch of the plane with those three extra inches and the one foot extra on each tire apart make uh, just getting a new feel of how the airplane turns and how it behaves and just taxiing and taxiing and taxiing and uh, over two hours of taxiing and testing and making sure and red letting it rest check for leaks or check for anything that we can find just making sure double sure triple sure that everything is okay and the next step will be to fly it and i hope to show you that later on thank you for watching